Today, we're on the hunt for buried treasure with Troop 179 out of Big Cypress District. We'll share a secret ingredient to spice up your apple cobbler. Oh, yeah. Eagle Scout Mike Fossum tells us how he remains grounded, even though his endeavors have taken him out of this world. And how you can be a part of history in the call for 100,000 hours of community service in one day. Welcome to Scouting Houston. I'm your host, Michael Garfield, Eagle Scout 1978. In just a minute, you're going to meet an outstanding young scout who went from being prepared to being a lifesaver. But first, what's this I hear about girls in Boy Scouts? Well, let's get to it. Ryan Webb, Eagle Scout 2006, is our field host. Hey, Michael, there are girls in Boy Scouts. They're part of a different division called Venturing. And today, we're joining Sea Ship 1659 for some man overboard drills. Let's see what they got. Dude. This little knob right here you is your fuel. Yeah. So give it, let it, let it idle right there. Okay. Motor's free. Okay. Forward. Females in Boy Scouting are kind of, I don't know, demoted. They don't think that we can do as much as they can. Better to not burn up the motor, and since we're close enough to harbor, go ahead and turn around. These boats are donated, and sometimes in life you have troubles, but they've overcome this, switched boats, and now they're headed back out. Are we clear? The only scout thing I had done is Girl Scouts, and uh, well, that's nothing like this. <laughs> and so uh, I really didn't know what to expect, but it's it's fun, yeah. Sea Scouting is a great organization for females and boys. Basically, just have fun with teens your age. Uh, you're about uh, ten feet from the dock. Eight. So we had three youth going and doing man overboard drills because you have to know how to prepare yourself to do that if it ever happened in an actual case. I think venturing and sea scouting gives great opportunities for females. Having the co-ed program, the boys and girls get to work together. The uh, youth females get to learn leadership, they get to lead the young men, which is something they're not used to, and so it's a good opportunity for both of them. All you. Head overboard! It's different than Boy Scouts are going camping. Like in Boy Scouts you're still in the water, but over here you're mostly like, the main is like sailing. And it's just easy going, it's fun. Mostly when you're pulling them up, it's kind of slippery, so try to get their hands and grasp it around your wrist, so like you have more of a grip. They have a, a great time. It's a lot of fun. They learn while they play, which makes it a lot easier on the adults. <laughs> there we go, Noah. Yeah! Woo! Finally! <laughs> I got my wing, wing, wing! Now, from learning man overboard skills to actually saving a life, scouts practice their skills all the time, but never know when they might be called to action. In the summer of 2012, 11-year-old Sammy Armstrong got and answered the call. He saved a five-year-old girl from drowning at McKinney Falls near Austin and was later awarded the honor medal for his valor. And this girl comes by with her gymnastics group and all of a sudden she drops her water bottle and tries to grab it but ends up slipping in a puddle and goes over the waterfall and she's like five years old so she can't swim. So the water's beating down on her head and she's bobbing up and down and bobbing. From the where I was, looking down, I could see him and I could see her top of her head bobbing under the water. I could see the wispy tops of her hair and her little hands coming up. And I'm thinking, no, this is a bad situation. So I, I looked at him and he looked at me and I said, you've got to get her out of there. 
He looked at me again. I said, you got this. And I tried to, I tried to stay daddy calm. I swim over there and uh, she jumps on my head and almost drowns me, first of all. And then I, I think about it a little bit, take her off my back, push her far enough away and ask her, can you swim? She's like, no. So then I put her back on my back, she's a little calmer this time. And I go over to a little rock, like not very big, and I just sit there and wait for some help. Sammy Armstrong received the honor medal from the Boy Scouts of America on September 16, 2013. The honor medal may be awarded to a young member or adult leader who has demonstrated unusual heroism and skill in saving or attempting to save a life at considerable risk to oneself. Only 52 medals were awarded in 2012 out of 2.7 million active scouts. Congratulations to Sammy. And just in case you're wondering, Sammy's dad couldn't jump in after the girl because he was holding Sammy's two-year-old brother at the time. Glad everyone is all right. Hey, Ryan, what do you have cooking over there? Ah, that's homemade, fresh, Dutch oven apple cobbler. We'll show you how to make it. Oh, there he is. He found it. And a high-tech hidden treasure coming up. Do you want your coals hot, fast? Then try this. Get a charcoal chimney from any local sporting goods store. Find some old newspaper, roll it up tight, and stuff it in the bottom. Turn the chimney over and pour in your coals. Light the paper underneath. As the air goes through, the coals ignite. Within about 12 minutes, your coals are white, hot, and ready for cooking. Benefits are it's safe, less expensive, and definitely faster. Now let's see what Ryan has cooking. Now he's found a secret ingredient that might just give you an edge in a Dutch oven competition. Let's find out what it is. Thanks, Michael, and welcome to Bear Creek Park, everybody. We're here today with Robert, Robbie, and Derek, and they're going to show us an award-winning recipe for apple cobbler, Dutch oven style. Take it away, Robert. Thank you, Ryan. Today we're going to make an apple cobbler. It's a very simple recipe, has five ingredients. To start with, take four tablespoons of butter and put that strategically on the bottom of our Dutch oven. The butter on the bottom keeps the cobbler from sticking and burning. The second ingredient would be to add the classic yellow cake mix. So Derek, if I could have you put about half of that cover all over the bottom and over the, uh, over the butter. Third ingredient is to add our apple pie filling. Get it good to the last drop. Put the rest of the cake mix over the fruit filling. For the secret ingredient, we take a full bottle of Coca-Cola. I just pour that all over. All right, final ingredient that we're going to add is ground cinnamon. And I just sprinkle that over the top and until it feels right. Place those last four pats equally around the top. And that's it. All the ingredients are in. We're gonna take the lid and put it on top. And our oven is ready for the coals. We're going to simulate 350 degrees in our Dutch oven. For 45 minutes, let our cobbler cook. We'll turn it a quarter turn every 15 minutes. It's been 15 minutes, so we need to turn our oven a quarter of a turn. And we're good for another 15 minutes. It's been 15 minutes, so we need to turn our oven a quarter of a turn and we're good for another 15 minutes. It's time to check to see how we're doing. Try not to get ashes in the cobbler. There we oh, go. Yeah. That looks great. You'll just try let's that. See. We'll just go right down to the center. And let's see what we're looking for. Oh, almost there. I think. And Robert, how did you know it wasn't done? Sure. All right. What we're looking for is when you put that spoon to not have anything come out on it. So that's the evidence there. We need about five minutes. Go ahead, dig in. I can take the award in it. Thanks for joining us. Better than Grandma made it. I mind if I steal a little more. <laughs> Coca-Cola, huh? Who would have thought? 
Well, from rich in flavor to rich in treasure. A new merit badge called geocaching has scouts on the hunt for more than just knowledge. Ryan shows us how this technology is changing the direction of orienteering. This is a GPS, and this is a high-tech treasure map. It's the key to it all. And Walter is gonna show Alex and Spencer just how this thing works. All right, this here is our treasure map for today. Each geocache comes with a hint, and the hint for this one is watch your fingers. The screen that then comes up is almost like a high-tech compass that shows you the distance to it and the direction you're going. It's a big red arrow, and it basically just points the direction of the geocache. When you get close enough, um, the, uh, the geo GPS usually makes a ringing noise, which will notify you you're within around 50 feet of the point you need to get to. And, oh, that was a noise. When you download a geocache, you will find the size of the geocache. That's all it will really tell you. Found it. Oh, there it is. This is a common a size and look of a ge homemade geocache. Almost all have a log inside them. Most of them most commonly have just a date and name on them. Uh, right now there's three. And you grab your either pencil or pen and you can write down the date. But one of the most important parts is you have to return it you, into its original position so it'll be in the accurate place for the next person to find it. Start, start us up. Just press enter. And follow the arrow. So the hint for this one was don't get bored. Billboards. Uh, the arrow is pointing at that one, the second from the left. 80 feet. That means we're getting close. It's about to make its ring. I have been orienteering before, which is similar, but no, I've never done geocaching before. I think I like geocaching better. Oh, there we found it. I think this one's a little bit more technologically advanced, like we're going into now. So I feel like it's more of a future kind of thing rather than compass, which is a little bit more in the past. Each travel pug comes with a copy tag, which is basically this, but it has a code on it. And then you can give it a mission. I put in one uh, two years ago, and I put its mission to go across the globe. And so far, it's been to 80 different places in the US, including Hawaii. Oh, oh there he is. is, he found it. What it is, is a worldwide scavenger hunt. That's all it is, a really right. high-tech one. And that was geocaching with some participants from Troop 179. Now visit geocaching.com, and maybe you can find your own buried treasure. Giving back to the community and preserving the outdoors is a big part of scouting. This November, you can participate in the largest service project in the history of scouting. We'll tell you how, coming up. Welcome back. Part of the Scout Oath is helping other people at all times. And this November, Sam Houston Area Council will celebrate Land Stewardship Day. Together, area scouts will participate in 100,000 hours of service in one day. This is to commemorate a century of service that Sam Houston Area Council has given to our community. When scouting started out, it was really focused on nature and, and the outdoors. And it still is, but I, to some degree, we lost our attention to the stewardship part. And we're trying to bring some of that back in our land stewardship day. This is our 100 year anniversary coming up. Good opportunity to do that. And then what we're hoping is we can use that as a jumping off point to do this on an annual basis and bring, bring attention to wise use back into the county program. 
I think the conservation portion of scouting is very important because in order to enjoy um, nature all around you and the environment, it needs to be conserved for the future generations. The Eagle Scout Association will also be organizing some of these projects and calling on all Eagle Scouts to participate in this special day on November 15th. We caught up with them doing their annual service project at Yellowstone Academy. This year is the 100th anniversary of the Sam Houston Area Council and we want to do 100,000 hours of service. The Eagle Scout Association is going to play a significant role in that. We're going to identify projects in the community that can be led by Eagle Scouts and uh, promote scouting within the community doing service. Well, this morning we're having a couple projects going on inside the Eagle Scout Association, uh, doing a service project for Yellowstone Academy. They're painting, they're cleaning the lockers, generally cleaning up the school. It's an annual project that they do about this time every year. The outside, what you see behind me, is our scout troop, Troop 255 at the Yellowstone Academy. And we are putting the wood chips onto the playground. I was an Eagle Scout and I got the email that they needed help, so I just registered and here I am. But I graduated from here. And this is just helping them out, redoing the mulch for the playground. It's very important to give back because they did a lot for the community and me and stuff like that. So I just, it, I feel better giving back to them. You can do it the right way, you can do it the wrong way. It's up to you. It's important to want to be able to give back because uh, the time uh, that was given to me by people when I was a kid, uh, out of their busy schedules, uh, I, I value that very much. And at, uh, at least we can, we can offer that to contribute to uh, the younger generation today. I always ask my dad, you know, what do, okay, I have my eagle, now what do I do? And he said, when, when you get older, um, give back. That, uh, everything that you got from scouting, you, you sort of, you owe that for the kids who are in scouts. And that's, that's my motivation. Like, I like helping people because, like, it, you, it always seems very, really fun when you help somebody. Coming up, find out why Eagle Scout Mike Fossum dreamed of being an astronaut, but didn't think it was possible for an ordinary kid. In today's Eagle Spotlight, astronaut Mike Fossum, his lifelong dream became reality when he stepped inside the International Space Station on July 4th, 2006. Mission specialist, a pretty extraordinary feat for an ordinary kid from McAllen, Texas. The main liftoff. Yeah, and liftoff of the uh, Soyuz 27 rocket and spacecraft carrying Mike Fossum. I'm really an ordinary guy in an outrageous job. I grew up an ordinary kid in the Rio Grande Valley, one that was a bit of a dreamer, a bit of a bookworm, but a, a, a kid that liked adventure and challenges too. Uh, and I, I remember vividly for me in scouting, the scouting connection, we were camping on the shores of uh, Falcon Lake on the Rio Grande River in South Texas. I was about 12 or 13 and I rejoined scouting and I was the campfire had died down, it's late on a Saturday night, and I had laid back on my back looking up at the clear night sky. And the stars were just standing out, just stark and clear. And I, I laid there just looking at the stars and kind of dreaming. You know, I felt like I was in the stars. I, I kind of felt that way, and it was that night I said, you know, I want, to, I want to reach out. I want to travel there. I want to go out there. And that internalized that dream to me. And I didn't really believe that it could come true. It helped make me a little more serious in school, a little more uh, serious in the things that I did, and it made me motivated. It, it's one of the things that, that helped motivate me to go to college, to pursue engineering, and to pursue the Air Force and other opportunities. Always reaching to, to be the best that I could be.
Scouting teaches you so much. It teaches you how to, how, to, how to achieve. It teaches you how to set a goal and reach for it. Even a long-term goal that takes many intermediate steps. It teaches you the kind of teamwork that it means to work in a team. And certainly the astronaut job is, is very much about teamwork. Nobody can fly as an individual. We, we work on a team and it's, it's an international team these days. And you know, I was the commander of the International Space Station just over two years ago. Uh, it's the, it's over, worth about $100 billion worth of investment from the United States and 15 other countries from around the globe. And I was responsible, I was the commander. So I've got a, you know, a maximum crew of six people. Uh, the number one thing is take care of your guys. You know, make sure everybody's working effectively and, and uh, look out for them, look out for somebody being overloaded and uh, see who needs some help, who needs a little assistance to catch up with the schedule that we have today and all those things. That's the same thing a patrol leader does in Boy Scouts. I learned this, those same values to look out for your guys when put in charge, take charge. Uh, you, you cannot delegate responsibility. Those are the things that I used as a commander of the International Space Station. Those are the things that I learned as a patrol leader and a senior patrol leader in Scouts. How do, you, how do you find the time to still volunteer? I have to. I'm compelled to. And the reason I say that, and without justice, is that scouting saved my life. I grew up in the Rio Grande Valley in a very poor part of the, uh, the U.S. Uh, and uh, I knew how to find trouble. And uh, there was a lot of it to find. And there, scouting gave me the outlet, the, the, uh, the opportunity for adventure, for positive engagement, for, uh, for different kind of things that were exciting for a young man. The, the outdoors was exciting, the fires, the cooking, the camping, uh, those kind of challenges. And the buddies, the friends along the way. And I can't pay back Mickey Allen or Bob Helbing or Tom Huffstutler. I can't pay them back. All I can do is pay it forward. So that's why I'm compelled to be a leader today, and I, I enjoy it. It's the only hobby I have okay. or need. Don't hold up here, okay? Hold, you can hold right here. And so I just do the best I can do. I'm a volunteer like everybody else, and my hats are off to the volunteers in the Sam Houston Council and across the United States and really across the, 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 the whole world because scouting's in most countries in the world. We're here to work with a bunch of young men that are trying to find their way as they're approaching adulthood, and they're gonna make mistakes, big ones, and we're not going to freak out about it. And we're not going to start calling in, you know, uh, you know, doing all kinds of things about it. We're going to, we're, we're here for them. We're here to help them understand the consequences. You know, if you do it wrong, it hurts. Part of that self-correction, feedback, logical consequences. <laughs> this is why we're here. It's to help them understand, to help them grow. Yeah. Yeah. Way to go, dude. Prepare them to leave our troops, to leave and to become leaders in our community, in our country. On my honor, honor, I will do, do my best to do my duty to God God's my country to obey the Scout law. Thanks for joining us. Hope you learned a little something about scouting Houston style. Hope to see you out participating in the largest service day in history on November 15th. I'm Michael Garfield, and don't forget, be prepared. Crew 191695. Sea Crew 1695. And they're going to show us 1659. <laughs> they switch boats. <laughs>